Traditionally, Japanese woodblock prints were typically created under a commercial publisher who commissioned a designer to create a design and then master craftsmen, so a block carver and a printer, to turn that design into a print. The prints that were produced in Japan in the 18th and 19th century are really unparalleled by any other culture in terms of their technical refinement and the sophistication of their content. The exhibition is divided into three parts. Shinhanga, which is new prints. These are prints that represent a kind of revival of ukiyo-e, the art of the floating world that flourished between the late 17th and mid to late 19th century. These are commercially published prints. They represent themes and subjects such as beautiful women, landscapes, kabuki actors, birds and flowers. Japan was so cosmopolitan so early in the 20th century that artists had access to what was going on in Europe in the 1910s and were creating international modernist art. One of my favorite prints in the exhibition is Hobaya Kawaki Yoshi's Tipsy. The new print artists, they tended to represent these more demure, ladylike women. The subject of this print is a modern girl or a moga and these were kind of Japan's answer to the flapper. These are women who wore their hair in bobs, they wore short skirts, they went out dancing, they drank, they smoked cigarettes, they had unprecedented levels of personal and sexual freedom. Sosako Hanga, which means creative prints, was more an art form for artists by artists who considered themselves to be very creative, very much on the cutting edge. They wanted to recreate woodblock printmaking as a art form equal to oil painting and sculpture. They were much more energetic in the way they carved their blocks. There are these descriptions of artists who wielded their chisel as a painter would a paintbrush. They emphasized individual creative expression and subjectivity. They have a much more it's a rough, spontaneous aesthetic. Compared to our exhibition last year, Conflicts of Interest, war is less explicitly present. You have to look carefully for it. One print that does give a glimpse into the wars of the 20th century is Onchi Koshiro's portrait of Suwanejiko, or Impression of a Violinist. This is a portrait of this musician who rose to fame in Europe under Nazi patronage. And she was given, quite famously, a Stradivarius violin that is rumored to have been looted from its Jewish owner. After the war, these categories of new prints and creative prints really sort of fell into obsolescence. Artists had access to many more techniques creating prints. They used lithography and mezzotint, screen printing, digital printing. You see things like minimalism and conceptualism in those prints. But not all the prints in the exhibition are by Japanese artists. And in fact, non-Japanese artists really did contribute to the revival and vitality of printmaking in Japan in the 20th and 21st century. The earliest print in the exhibition is by a female artist from the Midwest. Her name is Bertha Lum. She traveled to Japan on her honeymoon in 1904. So we have a really beautiful print by her, Aoyagi, who is the willow maiden from Lafcadio Hearn's Kaidan. So this is a ghost story of a the spirit of a willow who falls in love with a mortal. And of course, it ends badly. We tend to think of Europe as being the epicenter of modernism, but we forget that there were exchanges that were reaching all over the globe. Maybe our world is a lot smaller than people tend to think. Right?